In this video, I will show you how to properly configure user ID tracking in Google Analytics 4. If a person uses multiple devices to browse your website, Google Analytics will track those devices as separate visitors. But if your visitors can log in, you can send user ID to Google Analytics. Then GA4 can understand that those devices belong to the same person, therefore it's the same user. Let's see how this can be configured. Here I have a demo website and let's say that people can log in here. Also, let's imagine that I have asked a developer to push the user ID on every page when the user is logged in. I can check that by going to Google Tag Manager, then enabling the preview mode, and then entering the URL of the website, and then clicking Connect. And here I will see that there is a message, and here is the user ID. If you want your data layer push happen before consent initialization and before initialization, that data layer push should happen as soon as possible and it should not have the event parameter. So we just have the user ID. There might be some other parameters, but there is no event parameter. If there is no developer or maybe the data layer option is not an option for you, then take a look at my blog post. I will post a link to it below the video. And here I also mention several other methods how to get the user ID if that is possible. But in my case, I will be working with the data layer push. So since this is already in the data layer, I will just need to create a data layer variable to access the user ID. I will copy the name of the parameter and then go to Google Tag Manager, variables, new variable configuration, data layer variable and then enter the name of the variable click save then we need to update our google analytics tags to send this user id to google analytics 4. what is important is that you have to send the user id with each event to google analytics in this container i have two tags one is the google tag which is also known as the configuration tag and then the other one is the event tag if your Google tag always fires the first compared to other Google Analytics tags, then it might be enough for you just to go to the Google tag configuration settings and then add a parameter user ID exactly named like this. And then here you can enter that data layer variable. So if this tag fires first, then all subsequent event tags will inherit this user ID. But just to be sure, I would also recommend adding the user ID in all event tags as well. So first I will save this GA4 configuration tag. And then here in the event tag, you have several options. You can either manually set the parameter in all tags, which means that you would have to edit them one by one. And that could be done by going to event parameters, then add event parameter and then user ID and insert the variable right here. But if you have tens or hundreds of GA4 event tags in your container, then maybe you are using an event settings variable. So instead of editing all the tags one by one by adding this parameter, you could just edit the event settings variable if your tags are using it. So alternatively, instead of the event parameter right here, you can also do this. I mean, let's imagine that you already had the event settings variable. I don't have it, so I will just create a new one. And here I will add the parameter, which is also user ID. And then I will insert the variable. Let's name this variable then. And click save. So if I had, let's say, 10 event tags, and all of them were using this variable, they would inherit the user ID from this particular variable. So you can either do this, or as I've said before, you can edit all your event tags one by one and then add the user ID parameter here. What is important to note is that user ID is not a user property, even though intuitively you might think so. User ID is a special event parameter. That's why we configure it in the event parameters section right here. Speaking of the configuration tag, the user ID would work both as a configuration parameter and as a shared event settings parameter right here. But I usually set it in the configuration tag. Now let's test if this is working. I will click preview to refresh the preview mode. Click continue. And here I have my user ID. My Google tag fires on the initialization event. I can click here, switch to values. 
and I see that the user ID was sent. And then if I submitted the form, I would also get the generate lead event with the user ID. In fact, I will pause the video, then quickly submit the form and we will check that. Here is my form submission event. I click it and my event tag fired. I select it and I see that I am also sending the user ID with this event parameter. Now let's go to Google Analytics and test if the user ID was tracked by the debug view. So I am in the admin section, then debug view. And here is the user ID. Even though it is displayed here as a user property, in reality, as I've said, you should not send it as a user property. It is a special event parameter. And we see it right here. So this part is quite misleading looking from the technical standpoint, but it is what it is. And now if I click on the page view, for example, go to user properties, I will see the user ID. If I go to generate lead event, and then check the user properties, we also have the user ID. As for the setup process, this is done. Now we should click submit and publish these changes so that user ID tracking would go live for our website visitors. After you have configured this and then you published your changes, you will need to wait for at least 24 hours, maybe even up to 48 hours. And then once that time has passed, you can check if the data is also displayed in other reports of Google Analytics 4. For example, you can go to the Explore section. Right now I am on a different property that has been collecting user ID for a while. So go to Explore, then Blank Exploration. And the first thing that you could check is to add a dimension, which is called signed in with user ID, confirm, and then let's add, for example, total users as a metric. And then just add both of these items. You can double click them. And here you can see yes and not set. Not set means that for this many users, the user ID was not sent because maybe they have never logged in. And this is how many users have logged in. Another way to check is to add another exploration, which is called segment overlap. And here we can add two segments. The first one could be, well, let's say the user segment, and then we want to include all users. So let's say any user that has tracked the page view event, then let's click save and apply. And then we will add another segment where the dimension signed in with user ID was available and the value is yes. Let's apply that. And then we will save this segment as user ID, save and apply. And here we see that there is an overlap, it means that this is correct. Because if we look at all users, some of those users had the user ID tracked. So this is correct, because if you had all users, and then your user ID segment was a separate circle, not inside one another, then that would mean that something is incorrect in your setup. And then one more place where you can check this is another exploration, which is called user explorer. So if you don't have enabled the user ID feature, then all effective user IDs will look like this, where you have a large number, dot, and then another number. These are Google Analytics client IDs that are generated automatically when the visitor comes to your site. But if you are sending user ID as well, then some of the rows would be displayed in your user ID format. Let me quickly find that. Instead of total users value, I will use the event count. Then I will sort this. And here among client IDs, we also have some user IDs. The reason why you see this is because I know that this is my own user ID because I test and visit the website a lot. If you don't see any user IDs in the user explorer, even let's say 72 hours after you have published the changes, then there is one more place where you might need to do an additional configuration. And that can be done in the admin panel of the property, then look for reporting identity, and your reporting identity must be observed or blended because both of these identities support user ID. If you have device based, then all user IDs in the user explorer will be displayed as client IDs because only device ID is used, which also means cookies. User ID is not included in this reporting identity. And that's how you can configure user ID in Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. 
that will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.